Hi, my name is Akifa and I'm a student at AUT University. I'm currently doing my master's and my topic is about the relationship between communication design and activism, specifically in addressing Islamophobia. Now, you may know this, but Islamophobia is a global trend of hatred towards Islam and Muslims, which is why I feel quite strongly about the topic because I'm connected to it on a personal and a community level. March 15th is a day which will not be forgotten any time soon in New Zealand, and it shouldn't be. On that day when the Christchurch mosque shooting happened, I didn't just lose 51 community members, but I also lost people who I grew up with, who are like family to me. A lot of people saw the attack as a shock and completely out of the blue, but to be honest, it was bound to happen. So many people said, not New Zealand, not here, but those of us who experienced hatred from young ages just weren't all that shocked. The reason I mentioned the story is because although it was the most difficult thing to experience, it was the biggest drive behind my research, because it made me realize how little people know and how much we can do to help them learn. So this research will develop into an awareness campaign about Islamophobia. It will be carried out in digital and print-based design. The content will include facts, statistics and stories presented through typography, information design and illustration, all tied together with layout that aids how effectively it's communicated. To start off, when we talk about hatred, what do we mean? So hatred is usually incited through a long pattern of ignorance and misinformation which can turn into a vicious and dangerous cycle. But the thing about patterns or habits of any type is that they are sometimes hard to notice and even harder to break. The only way to really disrupt it is to throw something in the mix, something that makes you wake up, something that makes you open your eyes, something that makes you think about the way that you think. Call it whatever you want, empathy, awareness, consciousness. These are the things that really make a difference to a hateful mindset. So this research project is focused on how design can be the thing that actually breaks that cycle, how design can be the reason someone questions their own biases, how it can start an important conversation, how it can invoke empathy. Now, for that change to occur at any level, the problem itself has to be addressed, right? But before that, there needs to be recognition that it exists at all. And that's why design activism exists, to visually remind people about issues that they choose so easily to forget. The methodology of design activism is really the driving force behind this project. The concept is simple. It's when design is used to address issues that may be social, political, environmental, economic, you name it. The aim of the design becomes to connect the viewer to a greater cause in the split second of attention that they pay to the work in front of them. It can be subtle or explicit and exists in all disciplines of design. I would argue that designers have a responsibility to actually use their skills for the betterment of the world around them and to exist beyond just being cogs in a commercial machine. And as it is, the world we live in has endless issues that need to be talked about more. When it comes to Islamophobia, there is no short list of things to address. Whether you want to talk about debunking mass media stereotypes, we can talk about the war on terror narrative, the depictions of Muslims in Hollywood, even just blatant ethnic cleansing. But the reality is that every action begins with a certain mindset. Like, concentration camps in 2021 wouldn't exist if the world hadn't decided that it wasn't a big enough deal to talk about. You know, anti-hijab laws would not be passed if it wasn't so socially acceptable to hate the person who wears it. Mindsets are what dictate all of this and need to be nipped in the bud. But the question is, why is it so easy for those mindsets to become actions? One of the methods used in this practice-based research is visual representations of concepts and theories. It's when a deep and lengthy concept can be translated into a graphic element that helps it to be understood. So for example, when we think of Islamophobia, we can think of a pyramid model, where the level of danger increases as you move up. If this pyramid was presented to someone, they might be thinking, oh my gosh, I never realized I was biased. I never realized how often my friends make rude jokes in front of me. But the thing is, there's a reason that the visual levels of this pyramid become smaller as they represent something more dangerous, and it's because biased attitudes are a lot more common and therefore ignored than blatant genocide. But change at any level is so important. So if I focus on changing my mindset, a change can then occur in my actions because I'll think twice about it, right? And so on and so forth. All it takes is empathy and a bit of education, and the cycle can be broken just like that. The interesting thing about the pyramid is that the lines are not always this clear. 
If left unhindered, it's way too easy to jump up three steps without even realizing it. Actually, the pyramid looks a bit more like this, when you don't really know where one step ends and the next step begins. When you think you're just making excuses for an unfair hiring process, but suddenly you catch yourself justifying war crimes, just because you're so conditioned to thinking that it's just no big deal. The pyramid is just one example, but it's through design that theories like this can be broken down and communicated using a simple and familiar graphic. The pyramid I just showed was a result of readings, iterations, conversations with my supervisors, and heaps of research maps. One thing about my research process is that it includes a lot of analog work that is documented as I go. Maybe it's just the communication design student in me, but I find process books an absolute saving grace when it comes to methodical thinking and actually justifying decisions that I make. As you can see, it's the heart and soul of my practice. Every mind map, mood board, concept sketch, piece of feedback, reading notes, annotations, literally everything that's crossed my mind while carrying out my research is all in one place. The reason I think it helps so much is because the practice and the research often become intertwined and the process book becomes a proof of growth and change. I tend to keep it quite visual with the occasional ramble here and there because I feel like if I had simply written all the changes I made, I think it would be harder to follow. This brings me to my next point. We all know that attention spans are only decreasing with time, and we also know that a picture speaks a thousand words, or more like 10,000 to be honest. On one hand, literature analysis is actually a core method of my research since it's the backbone of the information that needs to actually be communicated, right? But unfortunately, the chances of people wanting to sit down and read articles or news reports about ongoing issues are honestly quite low if it doesn't apply directly to them. But the thing about visual language is that it can spark things in the viewers' minds quickly and easily before they've even realized what they're looking at. This is exactly what I want to tune into. The fact that design is everywhere. The fact that it can change the way you think, the way you feel, how much you know about the world. But it doesn't just exist in galleries or places you'd expect it to be. That's why the outcomes of this project will, ex will exist in many different mediums and take on many different forms, both digitally and physically. So they can be seen while you're scrolling on Instagram or even just walking down the street so that people of different ages, backgrounds, and walks of life can connect with it. Because the thing is, on one hand, a social media campaign may have more of a shareability factor considering how dependent we are on digital connectivity, especially nowadays. But on the other hand, publicly displayed poster design will show exactly the same content to a non-selective audience, which isn't controlled by an algorithm. So the balance between the two formats would push this message much further. Because design exists everywhere, and activism is all about outreach, the project aims to target current and future changemakers wherever they may be and whatever they might be doing. All in all, when I talk about change, I know that a problem this big can't be eradicated overnight as much as I wish it could, but I also believe that using any means we can to address important issues is a step in the right direction. So thank you so much for listening and thank you for your time.